who among us, at the start of another day, working at home, hasn't thought, today will be the day I change. I will not procrastinate. I will work effectively all day. I've had this thought at least three times this week, and I immediately open my computer with good intentions. Invariably, my internet browser loads up the previous day tabs, and I notice the YouTube videos that I watched only half of yesterday, and after many interesting videos, three hours later, I finally start working. Change is hard. We're creatures of habit. Change is even harder when it is thrust upon you. What is the biggest change you have seen or done? Was it when you started secondary school? Was it when you started university? Was it when isolation started for COVID-19, changing our normal way of life? Let's go for an even bigger question. What is the biggest change that has ever happened to a human? Was it going into space or the dropping of an atomic bomb? All of these pale into insignificance when you consider the change indicated by today's Bible passage. Which I repeat here. At the moment, the curtain of a temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Let us explore the significance uh, uh, slightly further as to what is actually going on. What is a temple curtain and why is it so important? The temple was a major Jewish religious building found in Jerusalem where the presence of God rested. The curtain separated the temple into two parts the outer chamber, called the Holy Place, and the inner chamber, called the Holy of Holies and Most Holy Place. The outer chamber was where the high priest was allowed to go, entering frequently to burn incense on the altar and to replace the bread of the presence. However, the inner chamber specifically was where the presence of God was felt to reside. Here, a most holy relic, the Ark of the Covenant, was originally kept, although this had been lost in the Babylonian invasion and in Jesus' time there was a representative stone slab. The inner section could only be entered once a year on the Day of Atonement by the High Priest and only once he had offered the appropriate blood sacrifices. The curtain itself was a huge piece of durable wool. According to the book of Exodus, it was made of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim woven into it by a skilled worker. Let's be clear, this is not like a curtain in your college room which doesn't keep the light out and probably falls apart in your hand. This temple curtain was a hefty piece of fabric. The fact that it had been so completely torn in two from top to bottom suggests that this was done by God himself rather than by human hands. So why is the detail of a curtain splitting so important that it was written immediately after the report of Jesus died? The curtain represents a separation that sin has caused between man and God. The holiness and purity of God is too great for us to bear in our normal sinful form and unfortunately also prevented man talking directly to God. Only the high priest, once completely purified through a blood sacrifice, could enter into God's presence and enjoy the privilege of drawing near to him. However, Jesus now offers himself at that sacrifice, dying for our sin. The barrier between us and God has been removed through Jesus. We can now enter directly into God's presence. There are also some other key details about this change. This tear in the temple curtain shows the fulfilment of the old contract between God and the Jews. As the traditions of the old temple no longer need to be upheld. It also shows the creation of the new promise between God and man. Jesus is now the person who has taken our sin, being our blood sacrifice to make all right with God, and this allows us to enter heaven. As a Roman Catholic catechism puts so well, he is our mediator between God and man, 
and can act in this way as he is holy, blameless, unstained. This new covenant is there for all people, Jew and Gentile, and allows us to be put right with God despite our sin. So at this one point in history, the entire world changed. Not only at that time, but for all times, allowing us to draw close to God. We can now boldly stand face to face with God, thanks to Jesus putting right our sins. The temple has been laid bare and open for all to enter. This is wondrous news, but we need to consider carefully the implications. Because of Jesus, we have no barrier to getting close to God. The change that happened over two millennia ago is still available to us, but we have to go through Jesus. By believing in him, we are able to draw nearer to God. There is another important idea. The splitting of the temple curtain has also allowed God to get a lot closer to us. If we allow it, this will inspire change in us. The closeness that God now has with us, started by his son dying for our sins and further enhanced by the sending of the Holy Spirit, allows us to be transformed. At this point, if we look at the lives of many of the saints, we can see many who have undergone great changes to themselves throughout their lives. One of the most infamous examples is Saint Augustine, who in the years of his youth uh, partied wildly, had an illegitimate son, and is reported to have said, grant me charity, but not just yet. This is indeed an extreme example of change. But his change happened over the course of years. St John Henry Newman, a former fellow of Oriel College, is a good source of inspiration here. He went through huge changes in his thinking throughout his life, helping the Oxford movement to gain traction. Throughout his life, he constantly developed and changed his views as he grew to understand the world better and he allowed himself to change too. His famous quote about change is the following. To live is to change, and to be perfect is to have changed often. The biggest change of all, humans having a way to God, has occurred as a result of Jesus' life, and was symbolised by the splitting of a temple curtain. This change is still being felt today, by you and me. So the question we must now ask ourselves is how will we let ourselves be changed by God? So as you sit at home, looking at what has happened in your life recently, you might feel that a lot has changed. We are isolated from seeing our friends in person. We cannot go to the churches to draw closer to God. We cannot participate in the services that we are used to, whether evil and call, even song, or mass. It is easy to think that God is less accessible to us. However, these words today reassure us that God is still close. The new covenant is um, a promise, the new promise that we have is still true today and changing the world. This separation from our old normal has given a new opportunity to think about our faith in different ways. Never before have so many services been streamed or so much material been available to us online. We have a chance to examine our life from a fresh perspective, ready to be open to the change that God wants us to make. Are we open to the change that God wants us to do? I leave you finally with this prayer from an American theologian, Reynold Niebuhr. God Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Amen.